How you doing, this is Tiberi. We're going to look at how to hook up a manifold gauge set to an air conditioning system on your vehicle. Uh, most vehicles use R134A, so this manifold gauge set is set up for the use of R134A. So I'll just go through the basic procedures of how to set it up so you can get gauge readings and then how to remove it once you're done. Okay, so the first step is we're going to take a look at the valves and make sure that they're in the correct position before we start assembling. Now there's a couple varieties of these out there. Um, some of them have round knobs right here, round knobs on the side or whatever the case may be. Some systems have quick connects instead of knobs on the ends. On this particular one, the procedure is going to be the same regardless. Uh, but on this particular one, what you want to make sure, very first thing, is that your manifold gauge knobs are closed, and make sure your hoses are also closed. So for the hoses, you want to make sure that you turn this dial counterclockwise. I'm sorry, valve. Turn this valve counterclockwise all the way until it stops. So we're turning in this direction. So that way. Once everything is closed completely, then we can go ahead and we can hook up. So the first one we're going to hook up is the low side. Okay, so to connect our low side, what we're going to do is first locate the fitting. In this case, it's all the way down here next to the alternator. And you got a small cap, a uh, black plastic cap. We're going to have to remove that. Now, it's real important that you don't lose these. Okay? And the reason being is because sometimes, uh, let's see if I can get this. Uh, sometimes there's an O ring on the inside, and that actually prevents minor loss of AC. So, good to keep these caps, try not to lose them. All right, once the cap is removed on the low side, we're going to go ahead and take the fitting. Uh, you got a collar right here, you're going to pull this collar back, and then we're going to connect it onto the line. And again, make sure that your valve is closed. So in order to do so, you've got to turn it counterclockwise, okay? So if there's a gap right here, that's a good indication that your valve is closed, okay? So we'll go ahead and connect it. All right, once you connect it, give it a little tug up, make sure everything is good. Get these out of the way. All right, next thing we're going to do is close the, or sorry, open the valve. So we're going to turn it clockwise all the way until that valve stops. And this will bleed pressure into the gauge. There we go. All right, next thing we'll look at is putting on the high side line. Okay, so now we're going to connect the uh, high side. So, remove the cap again. And remember, don't lose this cap. Okay. Route the high side hose back kind of behind the engine. Once you got it, you have a collar right here. Pull the collar up. So it's going to look just like this. Same thing as we did on the low side. And then push it right over top. And give it a quick tug up just to make sure you got a good connection. Once you're connected, again, go ahead and take the dial and turn it clockwise. And this will open the valve and allow the Freon to go up to the gauge. Keep turning all the way until it stops. Right there. Nice tight fit. Okay. Now we're going to take a look at our gauges and our pressures. All right, the next thing we're going to do now is we're going to start the vehicle. We're going to take a look at your two gauges. So right now, uh, we're roughly a little over 60, so we're right around 63 PSI on both gauges, which is good because when that when the engine is off and the AC is off, you're going to have static pressures and they're going to be equal on both sides, the high side and the low side. Once we turn the AC on, then there's going to be a difference between these two. 
and on average you're typically going to see pressures that are relative to ambient temperature. So if it was 70 degrees inside of the shop, it would be right around 70 PSI, a little less. What we're looking for once we start the vehicle, a good AC system is going to be right in the neighborhood of about 35 to 25 on the low side. On the high side, it's going to be above 150, 150 or above. And that's a good operating AC system. If the low side is really low, like right around 20, 15, or 10, and then the high side is under 100, that's usually an indication of an undercharge. You don't have enough Freon in the system. If your low side is upwards of about 45, 55, almost 60, and your high side is creeping up above 250 and 300, that's an indication of an overcharge system. You have too much Freon in it. So now we'll go ahead and fire it up, and we'll take a look at what we got. Okay, so we take a look now, and we're right about in the neighborhood of 25 to 20, and then over here we're creeping up above 200. So pretty soon, the AC compressor is going to cycle, it's going to shut off. The high side pressure should drop down, and the low side pressure should start to creep up. So I'll keep an eye on it for a minute, see if it does that. It's also a good idea to make sure you turn the AC system on max AC with the blower speed on high and then bring the RPMs all the way up to 2000. So I'll go ahead and do that right now. Alright, so right there you can see the low side dropping down pretty low. Um, this is a relative, this is a low charge system. So, we don't have enough Freon inside of the system. Okay? Alright, so that's how you make your measurements. Now we'll go ahead and we'll disconnect the gauges. In order to disconnect these hoses, you're going to have to leave the engine running and leave the AC system on. So the first thing we're going to do for the disconnection of the hoses is we're going to close the high side valve. Alright, so the engine's still running. We're going to go ahead and turn this valve counterclockwise. And again, rotate all the way until the valve stops. Once that valve stops, pull up on the collar and disconnect. Now, if you're on the high side, you might get a blast of AC that pops out. Okay. And then remove the hose. And right, now once the high side is disconnected from the hose, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to go to this high side right here. We're going to take this knob and we're going to turn it counterclockwise. Now if this was a dial, you would just keep turning it counterclockwise until it stops. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to turn the low side counterclockwise. This is going to bleed the pressure that was in the high side line. This hose right here, the red hose. We're going to bleed this pressure into the low side. Low side is going to suck this line out. Okay? So now open up the low side. 
Low side pops up, and then the high and the low are both going to go down at the same time. Once the low side gets to its lowest reading, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to close the low side valve on the hose. So let's do that. Again, with the engine still running, we're going to close the slow side. Now I'm going to watch the gauge to make sure the low side's at the low setting. Right there. Once the low side is closed, you can go ahead and disconnect it from the vehicle. Now that both hoses are disconnected from the vehicle, next step is to take your two knobs right here, and go ahead and close them. And what we did is we trapped a very small amount of Freon in this hose set. So that way everything has been recovered back into the vehicle. There's no loss in Freon, okay? So then take your hoses, and it's nice and neat. Clean them up, connect them right up to the side. Last step is turn off the vehicle. Okay? And that's how you use an AC manifold gauge set. Thanks for watching.